Okay, so I, le I left that up there just to give you some uh, uh, examples. What I've done is, on the thing, I've actually put uh, references or citations down for each of the um, uh, seven. One of them that uh, the Cory was querying was this, catches, 1950 to 1999. Where would you put the date on that? Because I haven't got a date. Smack my hand. Okay. Would you put it after? After 1999. Before data set after. I'm, I'm going to say I would put it after identifier. I put the identifier in because of, if nothing else, it was unique in, a, in, in some senses. But this just shows you when you have minimal metadata how difficult it is to write a citation. Which means it's less discoverable. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Catches um, East Indian Ocean data. What, and typically, um, it doesn't come out of a corporate body, then that would go before the um, catches. Yes, but you see, Eurostat is not the originating organization. It's an it's 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 a, the repository. It's the collection. Right, but if, if I went to that site, does it actually um, give any, any additional information? No, actually, one? it had very little information. It was a very poor metadata record. Okay. Obviously, you know, that's all they could give us. So, uh, right, let's, let's move on. Because um, why we've been doing data citations is for creators to get uh, credit. And in getting credit, they also need to use metrics as evidence to gain credit. So the benefit of using formal data citation it makes it easier to assemble the evidence of the impact that a data set has. And that's what researchers are looking for. They're looking for the same thing in a sense as a publication. One has to be a little bit careful about metrics because as you know with publication metrics you can get something that has been um, cited hundreds of times, but it turns out it was cited a hundred times because it was a bad article. So uh, there is, you have to, have to look very hard at um, um, the metrics that are being used, etc. Now, the Data Citation Index, which is published by Thomson Reuters on the Web of Science platform, um, is the only commercial product. And the sad thing is, it is commercial and it needs a subscription. So uh, unless you have a subscription to Web of Science, you're not going to be able to access those uh, metrics, in fact. But they're the only one that's offered data citation tracking and recording at present. There are um, activities, Europe PubMed, PLOS Article 11 metrics, Scopus, Google Scholar, they're all tracking, they're all picking up statistics and metrics, but they're not specific to the data, the data set they're combining it often with the publication as well. So uh, at the moment, uh, only Thomson Reuters are doing that. Now there are other trackers and they're starting to build up. There's um, a, a project called Making Data Count and there's also uh, the IR usage one in the UK where they have now expanded to data sets as item types. So they've expanded to include statistics and metrics from data repositories. And both of these are, are processing the raw data and putting those into counter-compliant statistics. But there now are many new tools available for measuring impact of data, but they're all at a very early stage of development. Now this is um, one, this is a, a snapshot of a screenshot of, of, of um, data citation index, but researchers want to know about citations and downloads. That is the way they evaluate how their research is having impact. And here you see a record from um, data citation index about the repository, the number of times it's been viewed, downloaded, cited, etc. So this is a very formal, but it is the first one, but I'm sure it won't be the last. But there are now growing lots of less formal citation metrics for data. And the most well-known one is Altmetrics. Who's, who's used or knows about Altmetrics? Yeah. 
so you know that they're non-traditional metrics. They are alternatives to the more traditional form, um, like publication impact factors, journal impact factors, and that sort of thing. Odd metrics now can also be applied to published data, and it's becoming increasingly common to start seeing odd metric badges on uh, metadata records for data sets. But what is different about alt metrics is that the metrics are gained from things like views, bookmarks, Facebook, site you like, bibs and me, weak tweets, blog posts, delicious, etc. So it's coming from the social media um, products, if you like, rather than the, the very formal um, citation products that, that are out there for publications. Now, Dryad um, repository, data publisher, and they are displaying various altermetrics for, uh, for their data sets. Data One and PLOS and the California Digital Library have been funded to investigate altmetrics for data. So there's work going on. We're going to start seeing um, some more applications uh, being produced and more um, products being uh, offered to offer data citation metrics. The thing, the good thing about altmetrics is the immediacy of it because it's an early indicator of impact. For formal citations, if you publish a paper, you probably have to wait a year, if not two, before you get any citation metrics. Well, that's not quick enough for data sets, so altmetrics is that alternative. The problem is it's not yet clear whether these social media metrics are a good measure, if you like, of impact or quality and um, that's what they're trying to gain from some of these. So some examples of altmetrics here, Glasgow University Enlightened Repository, you can see their record has a, a, an altmetric badge and that translates, resolves into those sorts of um, metrics that have come there and you view those on the altmetric site, altmetric.org. Altmetric also does um, metrics for institutions as well, so you can see down there and they show you at the end, you can see uh, the standard sort of the scope as the world of science, but then they have an altermetric badge, which um, I can't read at the moment why I'm doing that, has an altermetric badge <laughs> at, at the side here, okay? There are aggregators and they're brand new ones. Impact Story um, has, is funded just by the National Science Foundation and they also are using altmetrics. You see here um, data archiving is a good investment. Um, there's data from that particular article that was published in Nature. And you're able here to see um, how many views, how many uh, downloads, how many readers, how many likes, etc. So that's a brand new, Impact Story is brand new. This one also, and I, I didn't know about this, but again, it, it's giving you the social media uh, metrics as well. So uh, another product, another aggregator, if you like. And this is the second uh, digital curation center manual that I really would like you to go home and have a look at. It's a good, easy read and right up to date. It is on the course um, topic, so you can just link it and download it from there. Very, very easy, and you will read all about these alternative metrics that they're trying to produce for data. So, we're nearly coming to the end, we're nearly at coffee. So, researchers need your help. They really do in managing their data. And it's actually quite an exciting opportunity for all the communities, both the data and the information community here. But for you, I'm hoping that you'll go back. Um, if you haven't already, you will develop and ratify an organisational data policy. That was talked about by uh, Greg. You'll ratify, develop and ratify a data management policy. And here I wanted to, and although it looks like an afterthought, but it's actually a very important afterthought, is in your data management plans, I, I, please, please make sure that you have a section that deals with born digital documents. I mean, all documents now are born digital. And you have to have a policy for how those are going to be stored, how those are going to be cited and recorded and metadata um, and preserved. So it, is, it may be included, embedded within your uh, policy for numerical data, but I think you do need to identify it as a section that you understand that there is other 
uh, other than numerical data, digital objects that are going to need a policy, and they should be included in that management plan. But then you can also provide support to your researchers. Um, you can assist them with the data publications, where they're going to publish their data and data citations and uh, completing metadata, possibly allocating DOIs. You will become the central, central point in your organisation for allocating DOIs. You can demonstrate their metrics. You can start looking at some of these alternative ones or at the more formal ones. But I'm hoping that most of you already have um, a web page on your organisation site that actually shows about RDM support, what you can do, what you can offer, what should be done, uh, researchers should be doing and thinking about with their research data management. I've given a couple there and both of them are UK, forgive me, and both of them are universities, but the content is very, very relevant. Something, you know, don't you don't have to reinvent the wheel. If somebody's done something very good, then you know use uh, use a good example or a good a good exemplar and and put it on your own site but uh, customize and brand it for yourselves so what you're going to go back to do is to do some advocacy um, this is rather sort of at the higher level and talk to your researchers about scientific uh, integrity and publishing data and citing its location about replicating and validating and improving the scientific record Obviously, you're going to tell them that it will increase their impact of their research. And one, I think, because so much data is lost, and we probably don't know how much data is lost at the moment, it's going to preserve their own data for future use. And future use because sometimes they use, lose familiarity with their own data. So even if they find it, they can't remember what it was all about. So, you know, actually doing data management on their um, data sets uh, will assist them. But more at the personal level, and I think this is uh, something that can be pushed really hard, citing data is associated with increased citation rates, and I think you've all used that advocacy when you're talking about open access and publications. And it has been proved, there is evidence to say that it does increase um, citation rates. It does fulfil funders' requirements, and of course citations is evidence for funding for your funding proposals. They will always ask about citation metrics. So do something to make that, uh, to increase those metrics. It will raise their own profile, it will arrange the organization's profile. They can start putting citable references in their bio sketches and on their CVs. Um, and uh, these are additional to traditional, so it looks like new work, new, uh, new ways. It's a way of tracking. And I think you've probably seen, if you've tried to find, even if you tried to see that aerosol um, data set, you can go onto Google and you will find that metadata record. So the search endings are picking up these citations, and they're, so they are becoming really discoverable. But now we've got emerging opportunities about quantifying data impact. We've got the new publishing paradigms, such as data journals. but. The metrics products hopefully will get something more than just Thomson Reuters because it's behind a subscription firewall, which is a great shame. But there is the opportunity of all metrics, which uh, can point to an early identification of high impact, but we don't know how reliable those are. But at least they will give you some um, pointers before traditional citation metrics. And let them see this. This is a cautionary cartoon. You know, struggling scientists, please cite my data. Otherwise, I won't get promoted. And my children will go hungry. <laughs> so, takeaway points. Um, what you have to remember is that researchers are data publishers. Were, are, will be data publishers. But they're also consumers. They need other people's data as well to work with. So, it works both ways for them. So, you need to... Um, convince them about publishing data and what benefits it reaps individually but also as the research community. It builds their, their uh, uh, research areas and that and that they should recognize and cite properly the colleagues who have shared their data with them but also to cite their own. We have that awful metric of 25%, only 25% um, of journal articles actually have the data set cited. I mean that's quite 
quite a sad metric. But for the research institutions, they should reward researchers who publish data. And those rewards should actually convince researchers that it's worth doing. I mean, you know, just to have sort of a label on a web page is not enough. There's got to be a much more substance to the rewards for researchers. Uh, but they should also offer RDM skills, development and support. And I hope that's something that you might go back and, and offer to do in your organisation, to start doing small sessions, small training sessions on that. But for the data archives, the centres, the repositories themselves, I think we recognise that they're an important part of the research infrastructure, but we have to assure their sustainability. Um, and for them to be assured that they have a permanency, they've got to demonstrate their usage and their impact. So they also must um, be developing their metrics and, and uh, be advocating how they can be used. But very importantly, because nobody will, if you put some barriers in front of researchers, they just won't bother to use it. You've got to make this whole process, this data publication, data citation process, very easy to use. Lastly, um, there is a list uh, an email list that keeps you up to date with all the things that are happening. Um, please join that if you would like to, but if you've got millions of email lists, then you p perhaps won't. Um, if you joined the research data man list that uh, Jamie mentioned, I believe they also uh, pick, up, pick up this one as well, but if not, please join that one. There are my uh, sources and my acknowledgements. Of, of people's help and use that I have had and I apologize I'm five minutes late I'm around anyway thank you I'm around anyway so if there are some questions but uh, have I encouraged you to go back and start the process good okay.